All right, I wanted to do a real quick video here. This is something I've been meaning to do for a while. These uh, posts are going to be going away, just normal lifespan of a forum. Uh, these posts are going to be deleted, so keep in mind this is time-sensitive stuff. If you want to go read these, uh, it is like a 36-page uh, uh, thread, so I warn you. But uh, basically what started this all was the talk of wide receiver defensive back interactions, kind of some unrealistic outcomes. And I want to preface this all by saying, and Ian will allude to this at the end, that there is no game that doesn't run off animations but for my personal opinion i think that if you know that and you look at that the game with the most amount of animations in its library is gonna is gonna be the better more realistic choice now ea and and madden we already know that the wide receiver defensive back interactions are already maxed out there's you know the catalog if you will for the you know animations is full so essentially what you've got here is a guy that's talking about um cornerbacks that go up in the air for an interception and then, you know, make a tackle after they don't make it. And Ian's response uh, was at the end, um, you know, he's just trying to make a play and he's picking the best animation to get him there. And that kind of set this whole thing off where people were asking, okay, so, you know, how does he come to the conclusion of that animation? What are the limitations of these animations? You know, because we've seen things like, you know, linebackers with their head turned and going up and making pass deflections, you know, people warping through each other. What's the checks and balances, so to speak? And uh, there's actually a huge post. I'll just show you this is Ian Cummings. And this is actually a thread I made that kind of said a lot of stuff, uh, obviously. And he responds with a very basic way of explaining how the animations, uh, you know, were chosen. So what you've got here, and, and I'll read this word for word, when the ball goes in the air, the, quote, play on ball AI, quote, uh, kicks on, which goes and checks players' ratings to see how quickly a player can react and what angle to take, which tells the locomotion slash running system to try to get him in a position and then he says in parentheses, don't want him to turn on a dime, which uh, gets him close to the landing spot. And the play on the ball, AI says, quote, play the best animation to get you in position to make the play, end quote. And then he says, so you can be leaping for the ball to make a pick or leaping for the ball just to get in place and make a play on the ball. He can also go for the swat in this situation. That determination all comes down to the ratings and the position of the player. And then animation doesn't drive the AI, AI drives the animation, and that's something I've said a lot, and again, there's Ian Cummings saying it, where you talk about AI drives the animation, the ratings and everything control the game more than the user, which is something else that was brought up directly after this, to which Ian responded, um, if you're controlling the player, everything is in your control, there is no AI, you select the animation, and you have to abide by locomotion rules, which is something I've proven false. You can go and look at my video with Kelvin Hayden where he can't use a hit stick for whatever reason, whether that's protect based, whatever. Uh, again, the user was, you know, limited in control. I've done a video where Robert Mathis's legs move at a different angle from his chest so that the game avoids a sack and animations dictating and controlling this game more than the user is. Now, when you talk about this, even though it's specifically slanted to wide receiver defensive back interactions, the whole game runs off animations. Like I said in the beginning, every game, every sports game does. So, you know, to an extent, this is true across the board, whatever player, you know, you're talking about animation-wise. Now, when you talk about games that are determined by interceptions and you talk about this AI drives the animation and what he explained there, essentially, uh, if the computer were to pull up an interception, according to Ian, and, and uh, you know, obviously he's the, the director of the game, the lead designer of the game, he knows that better than I think most of any of us would with a, a TV, uh, you know, and a video camera, he's telling you there's nothing you can do. You know, once that animation gets called, you know, what can you do? That's what the game's going to do, and I think that's where you see a lot of these balls going through players to get intercepted, fumbles going through players to get picked up, you know, these in-air collisions that are wacky, a lot of these glitches and everything really comes from the lack of a full animation catalog and the game just having to put a player and into a position where maybe he's not able to translate into the right animation and you get, you know, warping through the air, 360 spins or really goofy looking things I've only said uh, but never documented where I was getting my information from again the point of this video 
that the animations driving the AI really lead to horrible, you know, terrible looking gameplay. So again, just to get this all, you know, out there, I'm sure to many of you this is going to be old information, maybe to some of you it's new, but again, just where I was basing all my opinions on, I'm going to be making, you know, a lot more Madden videos and it's probably good moving forward from this point uh, to be able to come clean and, and say, look, here's where my opinions are being based at with the AI drives the animation and lack of user control instead of just continuing for you guys to assume that I know what I'm talking about and I got my information from a, a decent source. So uh, again, uh, your comments and everything are welcome and I thank you guys for watching my video.